Hello everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time closely resembles the average amount of time you should be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. Once the time is finished, I'll give you the answer as well as the treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. So for this card, you're given a 12 lead, and unlike my other videos, this is actually a life pack or a monitor style 12 lead, not a hospital kind, so you don't get that expanded single lead view on the very bottom. So let's take a look at this a little bit more closely and see if we can't determine what this rhythm actually is. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at the waveforms here just on the bottom part of the 12 lead, we'll just go left to right. We'll start here with the first beat. I'm seeing a P wave, a narrow QRS, and of course a T wave. The next complex is very, very wide without a P wave. So I'm gonna actually identify that as a PVC. Moving further down, another narrow QRS with a P wave, followed immediately by another PVC. Next lead, or rather next beat, P wave, narrow QRS, and your PVC looks a little bit different because now we're looking at V3. Tiny P wave right there, narrow QRS, and your PVC. And finally, in uh, V6, P wave, narrow QRS, and this one, I'll actually use V4 to help me interpret this. V4 is wide and ugly. That's the same beat, but it's superimposed down there in V6. So looking at this, I have sinus rhythm, or sinus brady, because these are sinus beats, followed by PVCs, and it's every other. So I would diag diagnose this as a sinus bradycardia with bigeminal PVCs. Because this is a 12 lead, let's go ahead and examine now the lead groupings to determine if there's anything more significant going on. The first lead groupings I like to look at are V1 through V4. And this is because these leads correspond to the LAD, or the Widowmaker vessel. So the way I, I tell people to remember this is it's like an internet listicle, except, you know, instead of the top four reasons for something, this is the top four reasons you're going to die. V1 through V4. Quickly looking at this, I'm not seeing any sort of ST segment elevation um, in our actual sinus beats. And when you're interpreting a 12 lead, you're looking for ST segment elevation in your normal beats, not your ectopic ones. So you don't need to interpret the PVCs on like an actual uh, contiguous lead grouping kind of interpretation of a 12 lead. They're not gonna be diagnostic for STEMI. What you're looking for here are your sinus beats. Then you base your interpretation on that, what you're finding. Let's go ahead and look at the next lead grouping here. 
I like to roll over to your inferior leads, so leads 2, 3, and AVF. Now these grouping, same kind of deal, just quickly eyeballing it here. I'm not seeing sort of any sort of ST segment elevation. All of these begin at the isoelectric line, but nothing on the inferior side. Our lateral lead groupings, same kind of thing. No ST segment elevation or depression here. Let's take a look at the actual scenario now and make a determination on whether this is a stable or unstable rhythm. So we're going out to a construction site for a 25 year old male, or sorry, a 21 year old male who's fallen from 25 feet. So pretty significant mechanism of injury. You're not seeing any apparent external bleeding, but your physical assessment is revealing a cervical spine step off and an unstable pelvis. Your patient's unresponsive, they're apneic, and they have a weak carotid pulse. Vital signs for them are blood pressure 74 and 42, SpO2 84, and blood sugar of 110. Now in static cardiology, your treatment is going to be based on whether or not you're determining this patient to be stable or unstable. For unstable criteria, I use the acronym CHAD. This stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration of mental status, and dyspnea. Based on this patient's presentation, he meets many, many criteria for CHAD. He's having end organ failure, so cardiac insufficiency, he's hypotensive, he's altered, and he is essentially dyspneic because his ventilatory rate and effort does not support adequate oxygenation. His pulse ox is low. So there are also some elements here of neurogenic shock going on because he's so bradycardic. So my final diagnosis for static cardiology would be an unstable sinus bradycardia with bigeminal PVCs. Let's go ahead and move on now to the treatment. Just like with all static cardiology cards, you'll begin treatment with by saying the mantra, scene safe BSI IV O2 monitor. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is ventilate this patient with a BVM using high flow oxygen. We're gonna perform C-spine considerations, so someone holding C-spine or putting on a C-collar, whatever you wanna say there. Because they're bradycardic, we're gonna consider atropine, one milligram IV push, but because they are unstable, and so the old saying goes, unstable gets the cables, we're gonna go ahead and attach pads and select the pacer function on our monitor. The first thing that's gonna pop up is the rate. So we're gonna set our rate at anywhere between 60 and 100, and we're gonna increase the current until we see electrical capture, and then we'll check a carotid pulse to assure mechanical capture. We're going to consider vasopressors and fluid administration. Now with neurogenic shock, the point here is to not overhydrate them because they did not lose blood. So we would usually start vasopressors earlier here. However, he also does have signs of an unstable pelvis, and this could be hypovolemia causing the low blood pressure, but I'm leaning more toward neurogenic shock. And your pressors of choice here can be things like dopamine, norepinephrine, or epinephrine. All of these things are fine. Once you're done, of course, say rapid transport. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology videos. And definitely make your own playlist using my videos that you see here so you can create your own practice decks for your National Registry exam prep. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.